This is Puerto Rican Panorama, a program that explores the challenging issues, cultural diversity, and multinational heritage of the Delaware Valley Latino community. And now, here's your host, Diego Castellanos. Have you ever wondered who is that very tall man standing next to Mayor Nutter every time the mayor is making an announcement, doing a press conference, uh, or appears on television for any reason. Well, he is Richard Negrin, the deputy mayor and managing director of the city of Philadelphia, um, my guest on this program. Does he look familiar? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Diego, and congratulations on 40 years on the air. It's a real pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you back on the show. I, I, I remember you did a show with me several years ago. Yeah. Uh, or another issue, I think, it had to do with the Hispanic Chamber, of, uh, Hispanic uh, Bar Association. Bar Association. Sure. You know, but you are involved in the day-to-day -day operation of management, uh, policy, strategic coordination. Uh, what are you doing in your spare time? Uh, I don't have any spare time. <laughs> my, my spare time is with my children. I've got three great kids: Rachel, Connor, and Mario. The the rest of my time really goes to helping to serve the city of Philadelphia. This mayor is, has a great deal of energy. He keeps all of us very busy. He's, he's everywhere. He is everywhere. And expects us to be everywhere as well. Yeah. Every time I go to a reception of any type or, you know, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, he thinks it's people want to see their government at work. They want to meet their leaders. They want to know that you're engaged. They want to know that you're out there working hard for them. And he uh, uh, really exemplifies that for all of us. Mm. But now, what is this doing to your private life? <laughs> My, you know, I, I'm very lucky. I have, a, I have a, a wife who's an attorney who's very sophisticated. She understands the level of commitment. She is very supportive. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, you are, uh, without a doubt, the highest ranking Hispanic in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia government. Yeah. Uh, not the first Hispanic in opposition. Uh, Pedro Ramos. Yeah, a good was. friend, Pedro Ramos. Yeah. But, but you, you know, uh, it seems to me that uh, in this administration, you know, Mayor uh, Michael Nutter's administration, uh, that you have some additional responsibility and, uh, and the power that goes with the responsibility. And we see more of you than we saw of any. Um, city administrator in the, in the past? Well, I, I think that's right. I think my role is very different in that. First, I have, you know, I'm, I'm a cabinet member who is a senior advisor to the mayor, and that's different. But I have a different title than deputy, than managing director. That's deputy mayor for administration and coordination. And in that respect, I have a, a direct operational authority for all those administrative departments to help make the city run. Um, mm -hmm. But then I also have the sort of policy perspective that um, working with the mayor and his senior team to help drive policy at a senior level. That's different than the traditional managing director role in the past. And as a result of that, I get to really help make a difference on the policy side uh, on a daily basis. And that's something that I, that I really enjoy. Have you ever considered running for an elective office? Uh, I, I have my hands full now. I, you know, I think I, I've not considered that. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think I've been a a lawyer and in, 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 I've been an assistant district attorney. I've been a lawyer in private practice at a large law firm. I've been a lawyer at a corporation. Uh, uh, this is about as much politics as I think I can handle right now. So, <laughs> so I, will, uh, I, I will stick to this job. You, you like what you're doing now. I really enjoy what I'm doing. It's, it's a great blend of policy and politics and executive operational work that I think is hard to get in any other role. Yeah. Uh, um, I wanted to share with the viewers something that I know uh, about your past that, that sure. doesn't always come out. I, you know, I'd never seen this publicized, and, and I think it's awesome. Uh, you have some experience with the NFL. I did. I did. I had a short, uh, I call it a glorious career. Uh, 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 I'm not sure what my old coaches would say. I had a short career in the NFL. I went to a small college, won the national championship, was an All-American and got a great opportunity to play football for the Cleveland Browns. Um, I, I, I don't want to say the year, but it was <laughs> 1988. It was a long, long time uh -huh. ago. Um, and, uh, and then I had a, a, 
one year uh, you know tryout there with the with the with the Cleveland Browns, and then a year tryout the following year with the New York Jets, who are doing re very well uh, 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 right now. But that's that's a uh, great experience, a great opportunity, and uh, something I, I look back on with great great joy. You 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 don't you don't look back at it with regret for what might have been. No, uh, not at all. Most people don't know the average length of service in the NFL is about three years, a little more than three years. Plus some injuries. Plus injuries. I never had a major injury. Um, I wasn't supposed to be there. I was a, I was a Cinderella uh, kid from a small college who signed as a free agent. So the fact that I was there to stay to there that long was really a huge uh, mm -hmm. dream come true for me. Uh, but you also play high school uh, football and college football. In fact, you didn't you play with Walter Perez? I did in high school. Walter Perez, your anchor, uh, you know, one of your yeah. weekend anchors here right. at ABC, was uh, the defensive tackle who played right next to me. I was defensive end next to him, uh, mm -hmm. and he was a fantastic player, all state in New Jersey, got a full scholarship to college. He was a phenomenal athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, th th this is uh, uh, where in New Jersey? In right? Edison, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, football is not exactly a, a Latino sport. No, that's right. In uh, fact, um, <laughs> while I was playing, I think I was the only Latino that I knew who actually played football, and there was a very, f very few uh, professional players who had actually played at the NFL level who were Latino. You yeah. can count them on one hand. Yeah, but but it's funny that, that you know you you play with Walter. Uh, in high school, yep. play football, uh, and then you know here you are both living in, f in the Philadelphia area. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, you've maintained a friendship over the years. We really have. It's one of the special relationships in my life. We really grew up a lot as brothers. Sure. Uh, I've known him since really junior high, and uh, and we've kept in contact and helped raise our families together, and we've we've really stayed very close. Yeah. Uh, you worked. Um, after you, after you finished uh, law school and you know and became a lawyer, uh, you worked as a prosecutor in the yeah. DA's office, and uh, and I want to I want to talk about that a little bit, but we need to take a break. When we come back in a couple of minutes, I want to talk about that sure. and talk about some other uh, things about your life that the public may not be aware of, and uh, we'll do that when we come back in a minutes.